Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Alexi and this is Sototech. I recently updated my Galaxy S23 Ultra to Samsung One UI 6.0 based on Android 14. And I have to say, I've got some mixed feelings about the some of the features and some of the changes. And I would like to talk about it in this video. And the reason why I have the Galaxy S22 Ultra next to it, it's because I want to use it to make my points. So, hear me out. Okay, I've been using my Galaxy S23 Ultra with the update for a few days and I've noticed some unnecessary changes. For instance, and I don't think these changes make the user experience better necessarily, possibly the opposite. And let me show you. Let's start with the quick notification panel. I don't know you, but I still prefer this one over this one. Why? I don't understand why Samsung had to put the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth right at the top. I think here it's better and more reachable. So also, I don't like all these toggles uh, separating different areas. I think in one area like here, it's better and more practical. Yes, this one might look a little bit better in terms of looks, but once again, I think this one is more practical. Not everything can be about looks. Practicality is important. Now, my second questioning in relation to the update when it comes to changes. The colors in the notification panel. When you update the phone, the notification panel changes like this and also the color. This one comes like this by default with the blue uh, toggles on and the rest are off. So with this one, I do a struggle to see which toggles are off or which ones are on because it comes with this monochrome dull color. Now, what happens? Now I'm forced to use a uh, good luck theme park in order to change this and to make it more similar to this one. Before that, I didn't have to worry about um, customizing the notification panel. I was happy with this look, just the gray and then the blue toggles uh, when they are on. That's it, that's all I needed. So now I'm forced to use Good Luck Theme Park in order to change the look of the notification panel so I can see properly which toggles are on and which ones are off. Once again, why? Why, Samsung? Why didn't you leave it like this by default? If I want to customize it, it's down to me to decide that. Okay? I don't want to be forced to do things. I use good luck a lot, but I don't use all the modules. I don't feel the need to use all the modules, and I don't feel the need to customize the phone completely. So it's down to the customer to decide what how and where customize things. Okay, when it comes to another necessary change, if I want to edit the pictures or any of the pictures in the gallery app, now we got this situation. Remember these three dots here at the bottom with a list of options. Now Samsung had to move the three dots at the top with part of the options, okay? I don't understand that. Now, if you want to remaster, if you want to add portrait effect to a picture, you have to come to this. Then you need to tap here. First of all, I don't know why. If I, if all I want to do is to remaster and add portrait effect, like before, why am I introduced to all this information? That's not the plan. I'm not, go, I'm not going to edit that any the date or anything related to this information. Why do I have to see it straight away? Okay, moving on. All Samsung had to do, once again, let me show you. 
So three dots here at the bottom, more reachable. Now Samsung had to move it right at the top, less reachable. Now, all Samsung had to do is to move the object erasure option and put it in this list. That's it, simple. Very, very simple. And I still keep the three dots here at the, at the bottom. That's it, why change that? Why? Another thing, yes, Samsung, move the three dots back to the bottom. Get rid of this heart. Nobody needs to see or to tap on this heart. Why would you like your own picture in your own gallery? This is not social media. This is not Facebook, not Instagram, Snapchat, whatever. So get rid of this art, this heart, I mean. Okay, moving on into the camera and some of the changes I'm not sure about. Let's uh, start with video. Okay, for someone who makes lots of uh, camera comparisons all the time, now, before we have this linear, all the resolutions with all the uh, frame per seconds here. Now we have this one. Listen, I'm not saying it's necessarily bad. I just think it's not really that necessary. That change was not necessary. Actually, once again, for someone who makes camera comparisons all the time, I think it's better this one. So you got the resolution and the frame per second already there, straight to big tap. Now you have to go up and down, change to change the resolution or to change the FPS up and down all the time. It is a little bit more confusing. Once again, not saying it is completely bad. I'm just saying that it's not necessary. That change didn't have to happen. So, and once again, I think this one is more straightforward than this one. Once again, before I have to tap just and select the resolution straight away, that, that, now no, now I have to select the resolution, go down, select the FPS, go up again, select the resolution, go down, select the FPS again. So for me personally, I don't know about you, I still prefer this one, okay? Okay, let's move now into changes in the photo mode. Okay, so now, what do we have before? So we have this one, one tap, we have the aspect ratio, and also a way to change from 100, 108 megapixels to the regular 12 megapixels by default, okay? And also you can change the aspect ratio in one place. Now you got that divided into two places. One tap for the aspect ratio, one tap to change the megapixels, 200 megapixels, 50 megapixels, 12 megapixels, all that in two different places when you could do that before in one place. Once again, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it is an unnecessary change and it doesn't really contribute to a better uh, user experience. You get my point? That's what I mean. And my point also is that Samsung has spent a lot of time thinking about these changes when it didn't have to. Simple as that. Okay, do I think that the whole uh, Samsung 6.0 update is bad? Not at all. I think that there are nice um, additions, a couple of new features, uh, I think. And there are some improvements to all the features that are useful, actually. But I'm just talking about those specific uh, instances I mentioned where the changes were completely unnecessary. That's all I'm saying, okay? So anyway, hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you think. That's all for this video. See you in the next one. Hasta la vista.